We've got a couple crazy priest and paladin legendaries to talk about, along with some other pretty sweet cards. Hey, buddy, watch this. Seven new cards this time around, some very cool looking ones. If you don't have a ton of time, hit the quick reviews link in the description. Jump over to my five star ratings. Otherwise, let's jump into my detailed reviews. Up first here, we have Katrina Muerte for Priest, a new eight mana, six, eight legendary. It reads, at the end of your turn, summon a friendly minion that died this game. And uh, reading some really quick reactions to this, a lot of people seem to be comparing it to Kel'Thuzad. I think you see the stats and the cost, and you're like, oh, and it has a resurrect effect. It's Kel'Thuzad or something of the sort. Uh, it's not. Of course, it's distinct in a few different ways, right? Kel'Thuzad was good when you had a board or you were trying to protect a board where it would just you know, create multiple minions at once. It could be really big and really swingy, but sometimes felt like a win more card because it wasn't very good on an empty board. Katrina is actually going the other way where she's great on an empty board and the other minions on board don't matter as much unless they're perhaps protecting her. So she's, uh, you know, more of an independent sort of minion. So you can play her anytime and you're going to get some reasonable value as long as something has died, which in most cases, one of your minions will have died up to that point on turn eight. So comparisons aside, what does that actually mean, right? Well, I think this card's promising. When I first looked at it, I thought, oh, it's not gonna be big enough or impactful enough or swingy enough. But then I started thinking about it, right? Just summoning one minion here can sometimes make this feel like a spiteful summoner style of turn where you get a couple pretty big things on board. Uh, historically, you know, Priest has done like Wall Priest with a Taunt or two. Maybe you get a Tar Creeper back from your Katrina Muerte. You might think, well, just Tar Creepers not really enough, but I think it would be, honestly. Uh, if you were running like Northshire Clerics, maybe you don't feel as good about Katrina Muerte because you're just getting a 1-3 extra. But anything that starts to get into that, you know, 4-4, four, 5-5 four, five, five stat line, or maybe is just a really defensive taunt, is going to feel like a really solid card to come off of her because taunts in particular will help protect Katrina so that she can live and do this another turn. And that's the real upside, right? If she can live for multiple turns, she's going to be summoning a lot of minion value. So I started viewing her more as like a Lich King style card. It's just big threat you play on turn eight. If it sticks around for a turn or two, it's just going to generate a lot of stuff. In her case, it actually generates onboard tempo stuff as opposed to resources in hand, which can contribute really nicely to certain game plans. And her stat line is pretty big for an eight drop too. Like she's kind of hard to deal with. So I think this card does have some promise. Like a lot of people think it's crazy. I don't think it's crazy good. Originally, I was thinking like three-star card. Now I'm maybe bumping myself up to four just because she's going to feel like a good value bomb. Drop on the board. Hope for the best. You're going to get some immediate impact through some good minion. Maybe it's a giant thing too, right? You might summon something awesome and she feels amazing. And then if she has any upside at all, you're really going to love this sort of card. So she becomes a big threat for your opponent. A lot of different decks can use this to summon all kinds of different things. I don't think she's going to be used as like a combo enabler, so maybe not like Maligos or Velen necessarily, but big value threats like Ysera, big taunts like Moshog Enforcer, I think all of those are possible and make a card like this pretty exciting. Few small deck building restrictions because you maybe don't want to run a ton of small things, otherwise your Katrina gets worse, but I don't think that'll be a big problem for Priest. They can usually get around that pretty easily. So I do actually like this card a lot. I think she's going to be something we see in maybe a couple different versions of priest just because her return on investment is immediate and her upside is big i think that makes her a pretty strong card so now let's talk about nozari for paladin <laughs> this card's cool uh we got ourselves a new bronze dragon and it's actually combining uh two archetypes for paladin here heal paladin and dragon paladin getting fused together uh, 10 mana, 412 stat line, battle cry, restore both heroes to full health. So it's that tree of life we saw in Druid long, long ago, but it's attached to a 412 dragon body, which as we know with cards like Dragon Speaker, the new one, this could be a 715 or even 1018 dragon body in no time if you ran it in a dragon deck. Regardless, 412 is probably fine. I think a card like this is really cool for both archetypes. High Priest, the call, you know, puts you down to one health. You gain a ton of armor. 
You eventually get to Nozari. He heals your health up. You still have a ton of armor. That offers a lot of defensive potential for something like Nozari. Even if you don't have the armor shenanigans with the call, just healing for a bunch can buy you time. And if you're in a value deck, a control deck, buying that time is how you win games. Not only against aggro, but sometimes against mid-range or even other control decks. Like if you can just outvalue them, the health totals don't matter. So the symmetry here probably isn't important in that style of deck. Now we have seen Paladin in the past. Is that kind of class that can play control decks and still do a lot of like chip damage? You know, they just run a lot of weapons. The Ashbringer off Tyrion, right? Like true silver champions, just minions sticking a time or two, consecrations hit face. So they have been able to like win games via face pressure. Uh, and something like this might counter that goal a little bit, but I don't really think that's a concern. I think you can just build your deck to support a card like this nicely. And because it, you know, it, it utilizes two of those different synergies, I think it's a promising card. I guess the biggest question is, is like, are you going to want to run dragons and heal packages together? I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe he doesn't get like that double utility, but he's good in a dragon deck anyway. It doesn't matter. He's probably good in a heal deck anyway, whether you have other dragons. He works in both different directions. If they happen to come together, that's just a bonus. I don't think it's mandatory for a card like this to work. So I think, you know, just any sort of control or value deck, something like Nozari makes a lot of sense. So this is a card that I think we'll absolutely see some play. Next up here, let's move on to the Unseen Saboteur, a new six mana, five, six neutral minion. Battle cry your opponent casts a random spell from their hand targets chosen randomly. So this is the dirty rat for spells that so many of us have been asking for. I've seen this card design. I think I've made one. I've seen it shown up on uh, custom card competitions and custom card uh, subreddit all the time. This idea of your opponent casting a random spell from hand. I'm glad it's finally going to be in the game. It's a really cool combo disruptor that can be very bad for you or can be very good for you. Because if you look at it as just, um, you know, generic sort of play, typically you don't want to put your, car your opponent's cards into play for free. That's a really big tempo loss for you. This thing gets fireballed, for instance, and you feel bad because your opponent just got... Uh, an instant, easy, cheap removal. But if you can pull something awesome out of their hand before they want to do it, then suddenly Unseen Saboteur is worth it. Beyond that, there are cards like buff cards, like Blessing of Kings, for instance. Think about if your opponent doesn't have any minions on board and you play Unseen Saboteur, there's a chance you get to Blessing of Kings your own Unseen Saboteur. So there are some really sneak, directly advantageous plays out of a card like this. I don't know that that's why you'd run it. You'd typically run it to be more disruptive and break up their plans or whatever. But uh, that's cool, too. It works as a tech card. Sometimes it just works as a sneaky play. Now, not every deck is going to want to run this. The decks uh, that want to run this are ones that maybe can't otherwise beat some combo deck or this only gets run at all if there is some spell-based combo deck that exists. So this is not necessarily a card you're going to see every day, but it's very meta-dependent. I think it's important that it exists. Certainly the cost is high, so you know it's a bit sac a bit of a sacrifice to run this. You can't just like slot it into any given turn like that two mana dirty rat play of old. So it's a big commitment. It won't be an easy choice to include in every deck, but occasionally, yeah, absolutely it's gonna pop up. And I think it'll feel like an okay play when it does. Five, six stat line is certainly reasonable enough for six mana. So sometimes just playing this will be okay, even if you're not expecting it to do anything significant. Uh, I think this is a well-designed well thought out, important card to exist and a pretty good one to boot. So up next here, let's take a look at another disruption card. It's Duel for Paladin. I remember seeing this one at the Blizzard Summit. Five mana spell, summon a minion from each player's deck. They fight. I think this is a really cool card. It's another one I've actually, I think, seen on a lot of custom card ideas. And the artwork on this card captures what's really important about it, I think, right? You've got this huge armored knight wielding this ridiculously cool looking purple sword, fighting this tiny kobold who looks like he has this real janky sword. And I think that's the goal for a card right like this. You get this big armored dude, probably with divine shield and paladin, and you use it to kill something tiny uh, from your opponent's deck. And that means you're left with a pretty big minion that you summoned for you know only five mana, and maybe it took kind of a free or at the very least value trade thanks to a divine shield or just its higher health total. So it gives you a way to um, essentially recruit something bigger than you know perhaps five mana from your deck and just get it on the board very efficiently while also removing some resources from your opponent. 
Uh, it can also disrupt your opponent's uh, cards and deck, right? Like you can summon their big combo piece and find a way to kill it thanks to duel. So there's this kind of dual utility with a card like this, whether it's disruption or maybe just kind of a tempo play. I think there are two different ways to run it. So it's good against maybe aggro because you win that fight and it's good against combo decks because you're breaking up some exciting piece of their puzzle. So to me, a card like duel does have a lot of utility. I think it can work across the board. It's good in those control decks that run big dudes and certainly Divine Shields, I think, even get more value off of this, which Paladin often has a lot of. It's that Tyrion Fordring dream most of the time. So I like this card a lot. I think it's designed very well, and I think it's quite playable, in my opinion, too. It does require you to have some deck building restrictions. Maybe you don't want to run a ton of small stuff to make sure that you get your value out of Duel. Um, that's a little bit of a challenge that could hold it back. If anything does, I think it'll be that. But uh, otherwise, to me, this card is a really cool one and I think uh, a card that can see some play. Up next, let's talk about Shadowy Figure here for Priest, a 2-mana 2-2 Battle Cry Transform into a 2-2 copy of a friendly Death Rattle minion. And a lot of people are calling this like a cheaper, faceless manipulator um, that's only for Death Rattles, of course. I guess it is a faceless, that's a fine comparison and i've seen a lot of positive reactions to this card i think i'm uh not as excited about it perhaps as i've seen others uh it is true that you can use this to copy some really cool big late game death rattle fairly cheaply uh that does require a little bit of dependence on other cards meaning this card is not very self-sufficient which i think can be problematic also just how impactful are those death rattles gonna be i think for me it's probably best when this card summons a minion you kind of turn it into its own little egg style card as opposed to perhaps like a sneakier death rattle people are comparing like sylvanas death rattle or something or obsidian statue death rattles like those are fine but the randomness and the delayed aspects probably are a challenge and when i'm playing like a two mana two two i want it to matter um with its stat line like faceless manipulator right like you turn it into the big thing and it's a big thing and that's nice since this remains a two two if it's like a late game play I don't know how impactful it's going to be even with a reasonably good death rattle. I would rather this like, you know, be kind of an egg style card in an early to mid game tempo and board driven deck. You hide a five, five in it. It's an easy to activate egg. That sort of stuff feels like it fits the style of this a little better where it's kind of an aggressive card as opposed to some kind of sneaky utility card. I feel like it's not going to work as well in that utility late game control environment. They're probably just going to be cooler and bigger and better things that you're going to want to do because this card's so situational. You might just be holding on to it for five or 10 turns in a control deck, waiting for the right moment to line it up with another death rattle card. So I don't know if I see the same vision as everybody else for it. I think it's going to be a little bit harder to work with, a little bit more awkward. Uh, maybe I'm just not seeing the lines. Maybe I'm not seeing how much upside there is in some of these death rattles, but maybe you guys can explain it to me. For me, I'm not seeing it just yet. I think it's an okay card. I think it's fine. I just don't think it's going to be dominant by any means. So up next here, let's talk about Marked Shot, a new four mana spell for Hunter. It deals four damage to a minion and you discover a spell. So this is like the new flanking strike for Hunter, but of course, instead of being board based, it's more value or resource based. That's a trend we've seen a lot in Rise of Shadows cards so far. Uh, perhaps that will make this card reasonable as it stands right now. I think this is gonna be a fairly weak option, although Flanking Strike did line up a lot at three damage. I don't think four damage is enough when you're not getting some kind of more immediate board impact. The three three was a really vital part of Flanking Strike. Without that, I feel like this card could have maybe just done five damage to a minion and it would have felt much, much better. As it stands, uh, I don't know how good it's going to be. Discovering a spell, you know, it's nice, it's good, but not all Hunter spells are lined up along the same sort of axis. Like you get some like face damage spells, you get some like utility spells, some other board removal spells. I don't know that you're always going to get what you need. It might whiff pretty hard, and there are some pretty bad Hunter spells, I think, as well. Often you're going to get a ton of secrets, which I don't know how well those synergize with your mark shot, right? So it's going to be one of those cards I think is, is going to end up being more awkward than anything else. Now, obviously, if there is some really control-based hunter that maybe can utilize spell damage to increase the value of this to some extent, uh, and it needs a lot of resources, this is the sort of card that can do that along with the twin spell that we saw previously. So it's a possibility, right? Like, it can work. It's not 
fundamentally terrible. I just think there are probably going to be better alternatives that are more impactful to the board, and that's what Hunter's going to need to hang around if they're running all these sorts of spells. Um, this is kind of cool with Zul'jin, I'll admit, because you get another spell in hand, you're dealing four damage to a minion, that's maybe going to hit your opponent's stuff if you're playing from behind. All of those are pluses, but it still just doesn't feel fast enough or strong enough to me to be a super competitive card right out of the gate. And then finally, one last card here that I missed last time, Walking Fountain, 8 mana, 4, 8, Elemental, Lifesteal, Rush, Wind Fury, coolest flavor in the set so far. If you don't know, this is uh, the fountain from Dalaran that has been brought to life as an elemental by Hagatha, which is a really cool storyline uh, told in a single card. And this card's pretty crazy nuts, right? Uh, three enormously wonderful effects. You get to attack immediately, you get to attack twice, and you get to heal for a ton. So this card's gonna like heal eight, potentially clear a couple things uh, simultaneously. That's a really, really big board swing style card. It's like a super Zilliax in a way, right? The challenge for Walking Fountain is going to be that it's much more expensive than Zilliax. It comes way later in the game. If you need an aggro stabilization card, turn 8 might be too late. It could still be a recovery card, a card that helps you maintain your survivability in the late game. So I'm not counting it out by any means. I just think it's not quite as punchy or impactful as Zilliax because of that 3 mana difference. Despite that, a lot of good things going for it still. So a card that will almost certainly see some level of play in a slower Shaman deck someday, just because it is so swingy. It's like the dream swing card. It probably clears two minions, uh, restores a ton of health, and probably lingers around for a future turn as well. So it's something your opponent has to really respect and kill. Elemental synergies are there too. It's just good. It's a pile of great stuff, and that makes for a good card usually. So this guy's going to be played. And that wraps it up for my detailed reviews. Now let's jump into my quick reviews. Katrina Muerte is a four-star card. Nozari is a four-star card. Unseen Saboteur is a three-star card. Duel is a three-star card. Shadowy Figure is a three-star card. Marked Shot is a two-star card. Walking Fountain is a four-star card. There you go, folks. Uh, no ones or fives. Go ahead and yell at me all you want. That's fine. I don't care. There haven't been any one or five star cards in a while. You're just going to have to deal with it. <laughs> that said, if you have thoughts, comments, uh, any reasons you think I'm just terribly, stupidly wrong and there are one star cards, please, I want to hear them. Convince me. Tell me why. I love seeing those sorts of things in the comments. So uh, until then, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, game on.